Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. I am black, but calmly. What did King Solomon say? I am black, but calmly. Calmly means beautiful. It means beautiful. So King Solomon said, I am black and beautiful. That's right. That's in the Bible. But we ain't talked this in these churches. That's why we think this is a white man's book. A white man wrote this thing. Get in Job, Job, Job 30 and 30. Because color is all throughout this Bible. Not just talking about Christ, but talking about the people that helped write the Bible. That's right. It's Solomon. Solomon uh, 1 and 1. Because King Solomon, you heard of King Solomon? King Solomon was King David's son. King Solomon was said to be the wisest man in the world. The wisest man in the world. The queen of uh, Ethiopia came to King Solomon to get his knowledge. Read. This is the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. So Solomon wrote this. King Solomon wrote this himself. Now jump down to 5. Verse one. Real quick. What's a phrase that uh, J uh, James Brown used to always say? Black and proud. Black and proud, right? Black and beautiful, right? Read. Verse 5. I am black, but calmly. What did King Solomon say? I am black, but calmly. Calmly means beautiful. It means beautiful. So King Solomon said, I am black and beautiful. That's right. That's in the Bible. But we ain't talked this in these churches. That's why we think this is a white man's book. A white man wrote this thing. Get in Job, Job, Job 30 and 30. Because color is all throughout this Bible, not just talking about Christ, but talking about the people that helped write the Bible. That's right. Read. This is the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burnt with heat. Read it again. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burnt with heat. So Job, he said his skin is black upon him, just like your skin black upon you. You know what I'm saying? I know you said, you know, Christ is black, right? You're going to get Christ too. Because color is throughout the whole Bible. This Bible was written by our forefathers. Yes. All right, read this. One and one first. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things that which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So, what does... Revelation means. What's the root word of revelation? Reveal. Exactly. Reveal. That's why I said. Read that part again. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. Show unto his servants. We his servants. Things that surely must come to pass. Again, that's declaring the end from the, be the beginning from the end. We have to change this. We have to change the mindset of our people and get this white image out their head. Right, that's right. Now drop down to 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto the brass, unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. You hear that? That's described the black man. We're gonna read it again, read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So, it's talking about the hair on his head and the hair on his face. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So, it was white like wool. Because at this time, when he uh, revealed himself to John on the island of Paphos, it had been 70 years. 70 years had passed by. So, he had aged. Read. As white as snow. And it was white as snow because he had aged. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes was as a flame of fire because he drank wine in moderation. You know, because his first miracle was he turned water to wine.
So me reading the book, it's like shit. Yeah, yeah, like we've been slaves. You know, like why would I trust this book to stop me? You know what I'm saying? But if you're a friend, you can uh, I'm going to read something for you real quick. Read. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You hear that? That's why I said, if your spirit bear witness with the word of God. Read it again. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. God, his spirit is in the, in the Bible. Right. His words is spirit. So now, your spirit bearing witness with it like, damn, hold up. I was looking at this completely wrong. And like I said, I was in your shoes too, bro. How, how could I look at this book when all I'm thinking about is white people? Right. Now give me that in Acts 8 and 29. Because a lot of things is, we can come and read this and try to get understanding. Y'all got phone? Hey, get them subscribe. I'm going to show you something. This is the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Esaias, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Hear that? Because I was the same way. I couldn't truly understand this unless I read that part again. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. So he, uh, this, uh, this Ethiopian was reading the book of Isaiah. And Philip ran up to him and, and, and was looking like, oh, you reading the Bible. Okay, you read the word of God. Come on. And said, understand thou what thou readest? And he asked him, do you understand what you read? You know what I'm saying? The same thing what I'm saying with you. Because you said you read the Bible. Now I'm asking you to really understand what you said, what you read. Because you said, oh uh, yeah, I don't believe in that, but I believe in a higher being. Because the spirit is bearing witness with you now. It was in you, because we spiritual people just by nature. Because God made us in his image. Read. And he said, how can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So you need to come build with us so we can help guide you, so we can help build your spirit up, man. Cause you a child of God. Y'all a couple. How old, how old are you? 24, how old are you? Y'all from out here? All right, um, let me show you something. Cause when God made Adam, and then he made Eve, and gave him, gave, gave her to him, what, what did she become? Nah. Nah. I'm going to show you what God honors. Alright? I'm going to show you what God, what God honors. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Bring it out. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You hear that? Read it again. Marriage is honorable in all. So God said marriage is honorable. Because when you look back our ancestors, our forefathers, they chose a wife for their son, or they chose a husband for their daughter. It wasn't they was just out in the street messing around with one another, like society teaches us today. Right. That's what this world teaches us. That's why when you read this Bible, this is a true book. Right. And we're actually living things that's happening in the Bible today. But we just got to make a conscious decision to come back. Cause that's what's gonna change the world upside down, uh, change the world back up right. Cause when uh, we read King Solomon, king, he was a king. You a king, brother. You a king. But this world don't teach you, teach you, treat you like a king, right? They treat you like a nigga. They treat all of us like niggas, but we kings, we royalty. We descend from royalty. Right. That's why it's honorable. Read it again. Marriage is honorable in all. So marriage is honorable. You know what I'm saying? Boyfriend and girlfriend was never a thing until this world started pushing. And they push it hard too, don't they? All on TV, they got kids in middle school kissing and making out and doing all this crazy stuff. That's what this world teaches us. You know why it teaches us that? Because as long as we stay in the midst of sin, we're going to stay at the bottom of society. Right. That's right. But once we start looking at ourselves as royalty, 
you as a prince, you as a princess, you as a king, it's gonna change things. But we gotta come back to the law. Right. You gotta come build with us, bro. Cause you gotta be able to teach us. You know what I'm saying? Read. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. What's a whoremonger? A whoremonger is a person that sleeps around with a lot of women, or a sister that sleeps around with a lot of men. That's a whoremonger. God said he gonna judge them. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 